Rebecca. Hi, Rebecca. Good morning. Hi. And you're, you say your son is so scared he won't leave the house. No, he hasn't left the house since April, May. And so, um, explain the story. What's happening? Um, basically, he's been bullied online and in school. He's been beaten up. Um, he's, he's just a mess. Um, he's being called names. He's got no friends whatsoever. Nobody comes around to see him. Nobody phones. He, he's nothing. Um, he's already told me how he's going to kill himself, which I suppose is good in a sense, because at least he's being open and honest with me, but I just don't know what to do. No, how the no. school been? Mm. They're not interested at all. Oh, They're just not interested disgusting. whatsoever. They're just saying that they haven't got a problem. There's evidence, there's messages. I've seen messages. I've contacted police to say these messages and they're just saying, oh, because they were sent in January, um, they're out, you know, they're, they're not um, now, they're not present, but one of the messages was saying that if he goes into school, he's going to be beaten up. He never showed me. I sent him into school and sure enough, he got beaten up that day in school. How can nobody be doing something about I this? Just I just find this understand. extraordinary. Do you remember when we did the phone in before? We came across this. I mean, I hate just to be blaming schools, but there seems to be such a consistent message mm -hmm. that schools just do not tackle this. Um, so, I mean, I, I'm going to have to say you're going to have to go and have another go at the school and say this absolutely isn't good enough. If the teachers won't deal with it, if the head won't deal with it, go to the go to the governors go to the chair of the governors you know just keep making a big fuss because if schools actually do take action if they do really get involved if they get they should be you know dealing with the bullies they he, clearly the school kids who are bullying him so they should be actually talking to them dealing with disciplining them making it safe for your son to go to school it's really not good enough he won't go to another school because the school that he's at at the moment have turned around and said because social media makes the world so much smaller, mm. everybody will know who he is, so there's no point in him going to another school because he'll get bullied. But I've, heard, well. I've heard other stories there where, the, the, where that hasn't been the case and you can, you can change your profiles, you can make yourself a little harder to find. If you go on this Bullying UK, which is a very good charity, again, it's on our website, and they have a really good guide online as to how to, you know, block the, the various different forms of social media and to, to help your youngster, you know, to help them make themselves safer. So that would be one thing. I think if you're very involved and, with him and seeing the messages he's getting and help him deal with them, and also maybe just look for a completely fresh environment for him. Something to do with a sport, maybe. I mean, obviously, Ben found himself through running. But, you know, as you, if you take a kid swimming, or, you know, maybe it's music, maybe it's football, maybe, but something... Is he into where... anything else? Is he into sports of, of any sort? Is there something you can hook on to? No, he loves history um, and he loves um, anything to do with World War II and things like that. Um, and politics, he likes politics. I've been trying to find groups, local groups, but he just won't leave the house, he just won't... He just wrote everything that I've offered him, everything that I've said, he just says no to. I've been in his situation, which I can kind of understand where he's coming from. He, at this moment in time, he's terrified. He's isolated. He's, he doesn't know what to do. Um, he doesn't know where to turn. He's making completely unrealistic judgments on every single situation there is. And it's getting to the point now where there almost is no turnaround point for him, hence the fact why he started to talk to you about the fact that he's wanting to take his own life. Um, this is the time that you need to stand up and do something. And it's not about forcing him, it's about finding that one outlet, you know, from things that he enjoys, yeah. such as history or politics, or, or finding that one charity to talk to, finding charities which support with building self-esteem and confidence. You should speak to your local MP and well, say, here's my young son who's got an interest in politics and the mm. school whose bullying policy is clearly not working. Could he talk to you about it? And also, um, does he know you're calling today? He does. He's upstairs. Is he watching? He is. Will you call him? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah? Want yeah. want to bring him down? Well... Let, I think we won't do that on the telly, um, yeah. but um, but I think if, if Ben's up for it, More then why don't we? Why don't you stay on the phone, get him downstairs, 
and let's uh, let's let's get him talking talking to Ben and open up that and we we in the meantime we know where you live obviously we're always very careful we don't identify yeah. anybody fully here we know where you live let's see if we can find some sort of historical interest some sort of political interest something that might spark him a little bit thank I... you so much no. all right sweetheart no. yeah I just don't know what to do. I've just I've moved all my tablets. I've taken his dressing gown cord away and everything because I'm just terrified. I'm just so glad you called in. I mean, it just feels providential that this this phoning is happening today. We're here for you. I'm going to talk to you again. Ben's going to talk to your son, and we will find the local support and we will help you move this on. So much. All right, right. thank you, Rebecca. Thank you. Lots of love.